Central Illinois' news station. Now, live at 5, Secretary of State Warren Christopher wraps up his European mission today with visits to Germany and Italy. There may be some narrow kinds of military action justified under the existing resolution. Help for the homeless, uh, the Peter Shelter is doing all it can to help those on the streets. And Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas may have violated judicial codes for raising money for political causes. This is Live at 5. Good evening, I'm Wendy Roy Lanson for Deborah Harris. And I'm Bob Murray. Topping the news today, live at 5, the over 3,000 homeless people in Macon County may soon be getting more help. That's because a Decatur homeless shelter will soon have a new home. WAND Sandra Peterson joins us live in the newsroom now with more on the new shelter. Sandra. Well, Bob and Wendy, God's Shelter of Love will soon be moving to a new location and it will be able to double the number of homeless it takes in. The shelter now helps about 170 homeless every year. Their new location on Union Street will be able to take in twice that number. The new shelter is only four and a half blocks from the current location, but volunteers say it will make a world of difference. And, uh, there's a lot more opportunity to work with the residents there. It's got a fence yard for the children. It's got a security system in the house that's tied into the police department and the fire department. There's many areas of the house that are much a greater improvement. With warm weather here, shelter workers say the number of homeless is going up. The shelter had to turn away 30 people last week because it was full. Volunteers say the new location will mean fewer homeless are turned away. And that move will take place later this month. Coming up at 6, we'll tell you about one family who had to live in their car until the shelter took them in. Bob and Wendy. Thanks, Sandra. In other news, a Democratic representative from Springfield must make a move this weekend or risk losing his post later. Political reporter Eric Robinson takes a look at Representative Mike Curran's situation. On May 1st, Springfield Democrat Mike Curran, a member of the House of Representatives, had to move out of his house and across Springfield into a townhouse. The reason is simple. In order to run again in 1994, he had to move into his new legislative district. And to do that, he's renting a townhouse in the Westchester portion of Springfield until he can buy a permanent home in his new district. The new district is uh, about a block and a half away from where I live now, uh, which means that I have to move, and I have done so. I moved into Westchester. Um, I'm renting a townhouse there. We're still trying to find the ideal house for the current family. It's difficult when you got three boys who are used to a big yard, and we love the, the school that our kids go to, which is Butler School. And it's also difficult when everybody you're trying to buy a house from realizes you have to move right away. And so the bargaining uh, that you normally go through becomes more difficult for the currents. There were many rumblings that Mike Curran would just stay put and run for mayor of Springfield. But he denies those rumors and says he likes being a state representative and plans to run again in 1994. Reporting from the state capitol in Springfield, Eric Robinson, WAND News Live at 5. President Clinton faces a tough road ahead in mapping out his policy toward Bosnia. Standing in his way, skeptical allies, an unconvinced Congress, and wary American public. This morning, President Clinton said the European visit by Secretary of State Warren Christopher is bringing the allies around. Getting congressional approval promises to be an uphill battle. Congress is divided over the use of airstrikes and military might. Some members are advocating peace through strength. Uh, the world must take control of that area that is now Bosnia and that control can occur through uh, diplomatic postures, uh, through negotiations, but only if there is credible force behind that. There has to be at least uh, a battle plan uh, thoroughly conceived by our president with his military leaders that would include potential military strikes, that would include uh, the rearming uh, potentially of Bosnian Muslims and that might include uh, military ground action. The administration says it will be weeks before any military action may be taken. Police in West Memphis, Arkansas say they have no suspects in the murders of three boys. The eight-year-olds were last seen Wednesday when they went on a bike ride. Their bodies were found yesterday in a drainage ditch a half mile from their neighborhood. Police aren't saying how the boys were killed. Legal scholars are suggesting Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas may have violated the Code of Ethics for federal judges.
They say that may have happened when he addressed a private $100, $100 per plate dinner Tuesday night. Thomas addressed the conservative Georgia Public Policy Foundation, which says the event was not a fundraiser, but legal experts say the event was designed to raise money. Yes, we're asked to pay $100 for the meal and more if they wanted to attend a private reception with Thomas. But a Supreme Court spokesperson says the justices are not bound to follow the U.S. Judiciary Codes of Conduct. A Kankakee native has given $2 million to the University of Illinois to fund the first endowed chair in the College of Commerce and Business Administration. 80-year-old Robert Evans, a 1931 graduate of Kankakee High School and a 1935 graduate of Illinois, say he could not have accomplished all that he has without the university and the college. Evans was a chief executive and chairman of the Mercantile Bank in Eldon, Missouri for 30 years until he retired in 1986. If you're driving down Route 48 today, you're likely to see a tow truck 60 feet up in the air. The tow truck is on the St. Louis Bridge pulling up the road piece by piece. A section of the road is being repaved. But first, each of the 32,000 pound slabs of concrete need to be lifted up. The construction company rebuilding the street called on Jim Svensson of Soy City towing to perform this dangerous task. It requires the truck to back up to the very end of the road in order to pull up the concrete. This task started Monday afternoon and is expected to take seven to ten days to complete. And next in news that affects you, the Midwest is the place to be if you're looking for affordable housing. And the latest ways to protect your money when Live at Five continues. Did you know inflation, the escalating cost of construction, and economic uncertainty are making manufactured housing the choice of thousands of new homeowners? It's simple. Manufactured housing gives you more home for less money. Quality built, energy efficient homes at affordable prices. For more information, visit a manufactured housing dealer or community or call the Illinois Manufactured Housing Association toll free at 1-800-252-9495. District Factory Outlet in downtown Decatur is for new furniture shoppers looking for nationally known brand name home furnishings at the lowest prices every day. Buying in larger quantities gets you the lowest possible prices. Quality three-piece living room groups from $188 to $898. Famous brand name Interspring mattresses just $44 each. New recliner chairs from the incredible price of $88. Low overhead means lower prices every day at District Factory Outlet Furniture. Look for the Gorilla in downtown Decatur. Farm and Fleet has incredible values on sporting goods. Coleman propane lanterns with case, $21.95. Coleman cooler combos are $19.95. Sleeping bags are $16.95. Farm and Fleet has assorted all American helmets in youth and adult sizes for $18.95. Youth and adult coline helmets are $22.95. Spalding basketballs and volleyballs, your choice, $19.95. Other great spalding balls are $9.95. Only in Farm and Fleet Sporting Goods Department. Looking for an edge when buying your next new car? Then see Crown Olds in downtown Decatur. This week, Crown gives you the edge on new Cutlass Sierras. The Sierra, one of the most reliable cars in its class, has just received a $2,100 price rollback from Oldsmobile. And at $13,995 with all of this equipment, the Crown Edge gives you more Sierra for your money. Adding still even more equipment at only $14,995, Crown makes the Sierra an even better value. Look for the edge today only at Crown Olds in downtown Decatur. In news that affects you, unemployment remains in place for the third straight month. The Labor Department says its April, April jobless rate held at 7%. The government says service industries added large numbers of new workers, but building and manufacturing employment fell. The status of non-farm payroll jobs did change. That figure grew by 119,000, which is nearly in line with the year's average, but short of what's expected in an economic recovery. Reportedly, nearly 9 million Americans were unemployed in the month of April. And the Midwest has the most affordable housing in America. A National Association of Home Builders survey says the Saginaw Bay City Midland area of Michigan is the most affordable of all. 20 of the 25 most affordable markets in the U.S. are found in the Midwest. Three others are in the Northeast, two are in the South. San Francisco again led the list as at least as least affordable markets. 19 of those are in California. The labor market has been stagnant recently except for one sector, temporary jobs. In fact, many people saw the U.S. is becoming a nation of temporary workers. 
So their money is to be made by investing in temporary agencies. Beverly Stitch has more on this edition of Your Money. Hired more than a quarter of a million temp workers last year. While that represents only about 1.5% of the total workforce, temporary jobs are growing 10 times faster than permanent jobs, and many more jobs are permanently temporary because of corporate downsizing. So can investors ride the rising wave of temporary help? Short term, analysts say no. In the near term, we're seeing some disappointment with the temporary help business. Earnings have not come on as strongly as some people had expected or earlier. That's partly due to economic weakness in Europe, where the major temp companies have a big presence. There's also been a shift in demand from clerical to light industrial health, where profit margins are lower. Here's how the top three temp agencies have done, all off sharply from their 12-month highs. Manpower, half its business is in Europe. Kelly Services has been volatile as well. In addition to industry fundamentals, analysts blame overly aggressive bidding. Number three, Olsten, is the best performer so far. It stayed out of Europe, avoided industrial work, and profited from a push into the home care market. So what about the longer-term prospects for these stocks? Within the next 9 to 12 months, I would think those stocks would begin to move strongly. That's because domestic demand is holding steady despite the economic recovery. Economists predict Europe will pick up next year, and analysts say there could be a shakeout among the big players in the temp industry. Beverly Shook, CNN Business News, New York. Just ahead, news with a view. And what the mayor of Decatur thinks of the city's water. Stay with us.
But if we're going to grow, if we're going to become uh, the agribusiness center that uh, that I think uh, Decatur Advantage 3 is going to uh, indicate we should be, we're not only going to have to maintain our current water supply, but we're going to have to add to it. And I think uh, we've got to figure out a way to go from 45 million gallons a day, which is approximately what we can supply at, at the moment, to 65 million gallons a day. And uh, I think one of the things that we'll be talking about in 93, 94 is how to accomplish that and how to pay for it. Um, in terms of water quality, we have to meet uh, federal EPA standards uh, on 10 parts per million on nitrates. Uh, we have a $300,000 plan underway right now to help us uh, identify how to accomplish uh, that, uh, that to meet that EPA standard. Uh, we're convinced that, uh, that we're on the right track. The Decatur City Manager Jim Bacon is recommending raising Decatur water rates by 12% across the board. A typical family of four would pay about $5 more on each quarterly water bill. And on to some good news, some nice weather we've had. Isn't this like summer weather? Yes. It is just absolutely fabulous. Now there are some storms, a cluster of storms down by Vandalia. We'll take a look at those on radar. Right now it looks like if you get a shower or a thunder shower, you have to be just in the right place this evening. I have a terrific weekend forecast. Moms, grandma moms, get ready. The Live at Five weather is coming up next. Announcing a sale so big, you wonder how we managed to pull it off. Bergner's two-day sale this Friday and Saturday. Stores open at 9 a.m. At Bergner's, you've come to the right place. If you haven't been to Shaw's Restaurant and Catering, you don't know what you've been missing. In addition to catering, Shaw's Restaurant specializes in good food and excellent service. Relax at their Sunday brunch, one of the best and largest in town. Or come in for an excellent dinner featuring the finest seafood and steaks, including their delicious prime rib. Their Monday through Saturday lunch buffet is always a treat. Stop by Shaw's Restaurant and Catering. You'll agree, they're still Decatur's best kept secret. Tonight, an all-new moving and shaking TTIF. First, will Laura move out when another woman moves in? I actually miss you asking me out. Family matters. Then it'll take a ton of TNT to make Cody move this family. Step by step, and Dolores feels the earth move. He's our gym teacher. Getting by, and Dougie moves out. Is this a bachelor pad or what? On Where I Live, TTIF's got... It all starts tonight at 7 on Central Illinois WAND. Flashback with Vicky to the glory days of the silver screen. Meet movie's most glamorous leading ladies, Margaret O'Brien, Jane Russell, Virginia Mayo, Dorothy Malone, and Dorothy Lamour. How can you be a lady with hope and trust? And find out how their on-screen loves measured up to their off-screen lives. Let me tell you, kissing Bert was awful. Flashback with the screen's glamour gals on Vicky. Monday at 3, only on WAND. Today we were kind of lucky, kind of a freebie there. Everyone was <laughs> expecting rain, and it was a nice, somewhat sunny day. Well, you know, the rain has been in the extended outlook for so long. People just go, okay, I know it's going to rain, but tell me what the temperature is going to be. But, oh, I've got some terrific news for the weekend. Let's look at our Live at Five artist for the day, because it's always neat to see the picture of anybody from Adams School in Decatur. Look at this, Eric Barger, terrific shot. That's his favorite weather. Here are our current conditions. We've got a few clouds and the temperature is just terrific. 76 degrees, humidity at 64%. The wind is out of the southeast at 15. Pressure holding steady, just a little below the 30 mark at 29.97. Didn't have any rain today. Soil temps, 65 degrees at 4 inches at 8 inches, 62 degrees. Let's hold on to this dry weather. Let some of these fields dry up some more. Highs today, what a range. From the 77s that you see at Springfield and Decatur, Taylorville, to 78 over at Champaign-Urbana, 80 degrees up at Bloomington Normal, down in Vandalia, Fayette County, 85 degrees. 
In fact, the heat index at one time this afternoon was over the 90 degree mark. So it does feel like summer, especially in the southern part of the WAND viewing area down at Shelbyville. Bill at WSHY says, hey, it was 83 today, Bob. 77 on our computer, low of 58 with Jim Sion bright and early this morning. 71 and 49, so you can see we continue to be unseasonably mild. Sunrise to start out our weekend at 551, bright and early on our Saturday. Records go back to 1965 and just a couple of three years ago, back in 1989, already four years ago for 27 degrees. Cold. Pollen count today way up there. No wonder we got so many people sneezing and runny noses. Tree pollen is high and so is the count. Overall count 850. Here's the digital radar report. Been talking about these storms down in the southern part of the state of Illinois. They're moving to the east northeast at about 20 to 30 miles per hour. Vandalia, you may be getting quite a bit of rain right now. With these storms, they're embedded some really strong thunderstorms in the case of heavy rain, brief gusty winds, and even maybe a little bit of small hail. This is shower activity, may not even be hitting the ground around Springfield, may be stopping at about 3,000 feet. Uh, there's a possibility that the air is dry enough at the surface, but you also may be catching some sprinkles or some light showers around Decatur, Taylorville, and just to the west and to the southwest in Shelby County, just to the southwest of Shelbyville. Now here's the digital radar report for the nation. It shows still some storms and back into central Missouri, some of these are almost at that severe level. They have not issued a watch for the central and eastern part of Missouri, but northwest Missouri is caught up in a severe weather watch and there are about four other watches stretching from Kansas on up through Nebraska over into Iowa and even to the southeastern corner of the state of South Dakota. Now let's put the motion to the satellite view and you'll see this swirl effect. Well, this is textbook right here. Low pressure way up in North Dakota swirling around and it's dragging that cold front. That cold front is colliding with some very moist unstable air and that's why we've got a possibility of some strong to severe weather from the northern plains right on through the central plains. Here's tomorrow's map. That low pressure will feed up enough moisture into Missouri but it's going to fall short of us and we can thank this high pressure being strong enough to build a ridge in and we're going to have just fabulous weather tomorrow. It's going to be like summertime. Here, let's go with the forecast because you'll like it. For this evening, still a possibility of some showers and even a thunderstorm or two, then partly cloudy. Overnight, low down to 61 degrees. Southeast winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Bright and early in the morning when you join us at the Walk America for the March of Dimes, some sunshine, breezy. Now, tomorrow afternoon's high at 87 degrees. South, southeast winds at about 10 to 15. Tomorrow night, partly cloudy, just terrific. Low at 65. And for all the moms and grandmothers, on Mother's Day, partly sunny and a high at 86. Late afternoon or evening, we could get some real strong thunderstorms. Now, Monday has scattered showers and thunderstorms and cooler temperatures. High of 74 with a low at 63 bright and early on Monday morning. Then we're cooler or back to season norms on Tuesday and Wednesday with partly sunny skies. I've been hoping that this weekend would oh, turn yeah. out very, very good. If you have outdoor plans, don't change them. No longer in the forecast a chance for thunderstorms. Now, maybe one or two could build up sometime around noontime on Sunday, but it looks more like late afternoon into the evening hours. Stay tuned to WAND because we're going to have all the information for you because you don't want to miss if we do have some severe weather that evening. That's right. Hope we can hold yes. on to that. We'll take you back to ancient Greece for the Olympics when we come back. <laughs> Six Flags is bigger than Disneyland, and only Six Flags has heart-pounding rides you won't find there. And that Six Flags is closer to home. But did you know that now there are even more reasons to come out to Six Flags? Like a multi-million dollar entertainment series, beginning with the Acrobats of China, Batman Nights, a laser and fireworks spectacular, and much more coming this summer. Come join in all the fun this weekend, and you'll see why this year, more than ever, Six Flags is as much fun as Disneyland, all right here. This is
is the mattress sale that Decatur has waited for. Sealy Bedding and Goods Furniture have combined to bring you this incredible offer. Buy a twin size Sealy mattress for $199 and get the matching box spring free. Or buy a full size mattress for $249 and the matching box spring is free. All sizes are in stock and ready for immediate delivery. Quantities are limited, so hurry. A queen size mattress for $299 and the matching box spring free. And a king size mattress for $469 and the matching box springs free. It's the mattress sale Decatur's been waiting for only at Goods Furniture downtown and Hickory Point Mall. It's Maytag's 100-year anniversary sale. So we're giving away a $100 U.S. savings bond when you buy our Centennial Edition washer and dryer pair. Get a $50 bond on a Maytag dishwasher, or get a $50 bond on a new range, and get a $100 bond when you buy a Maytag refrigerator with its 10-year money-back guarantee. But hurry, this offer only comes up every 100 years. Even that works, for gosh sake. The Maytag 100-year anniversary sale is going on now at Nick Van Dyke in Springfield and Decatur. You'll see the best values at Walgreens. Save on Personal Optics reader glasses, full or half frame, even bifocals, a $14 value, now only $7.99. Get your pair of blue blocker sunglasses, a $49.95 value, for just $19.95. Walgreens has everything you need for Mother's Day. Choose from a wide variety of Hallmark greeting cards, Russell Stover candies, and designer fragrances. You'll find the perfect gift for mom at Walgreens. What's coming up at 6? Let's go to Julie Moore in our newsroom. Good afternoon, Julie. Hi, Bob. If you've ever wondered what it's like to have AIDS, you'll find out tonight a local victim tells Jerry Goodman about living with this deadly disease. And it's not your everyday sports story, but then it's not your everyday sports cast. It's Friday and time again for Ron's Friday Sports Spectacular. You'll see it only tonight at 6. We'll see you then. Wendy? Thanks, Julie. The students at Taylorville Junior High School traveled back to ancient Greece today. They competed in the Greek Olympics as part of a Greek mythology unit they have been studying. The students wore togas and participated in various games from ages past, including the catapult. Seventh grade teacher Linnell Spillman said the event was a great way to get students involved and we to promote spent about teamwork. Nine weeks on a unit called the Adventures of Ulysses. Then in the past two weeks, we've been going over some things about what to wear and uh, the Olympic Games. This is the first year that Taylorville Junior High has had the Greek Olympics. Teachers hope to continue the program next year. Bruce Lee's remarkable martial arts career made him an international star before his untimely death back in 1973. Now his short but legendary life is the focus of a new film titled Dragon, the Bruce Lee Story. Dragon, the Bruce Lee Story is an old-fashioned but very entertaining movie. Those searching for scandal will be disappointed. This film clearly intends to uplift the audience, not dig down into Lee's often complicated life. Jason Scott Lee, who's no relation to Bruce, by the way, has all the right moves in the title role. He's capable of being engaging as well as intense. I'd like to take some lessons. I'd like to give them. Now, you know I'm not Chinese. I noticed that. You've been charged with violating the martial arts code. This is the first Bruce Lee Kung Fu Institute. We do not teach our secrets to the enemy. I'll teach you whoever wants to learn. Some of them chop sake flip, man. <laughs> Dragon is based on a book by Lee's widow, Linda. Lauren Holly is effective playing her. She's a woman who's willing to break down barriers of culture and race to be with a man she loves. While this film offers some intimate insights, its perspective is rather limited. Still, there are a few genuine emotional spikes. This place is eating us up. Can't you see that, Bruce? This place has given us a life. I'm somebody. I'm special. Back down, just another goop. The fight scenes, complete with souped-up sound effects, are knockouts. <laughs> the subtext of this film is the impact of racism, and the issue is very well handled. The clunkiest part of the production involves the dream demon that haunts Lee. Director Rob Cohen goes badly astray with this element. Overall, Dragon, the Bruce Lee story, is an intriguing biography of a man who earned a unique place in movie history. Carol Buckland, CNN. And a uh, quick, quick yeah. look at check, our weather. Check, look. <laughs> check, check, look, look, look. Uh, this evening, scattered showers and some thunderstorms possible. They'll be widely scattered. Then partly cloudy and a low at 61. Terrific weather tomorrow. Partly sunny, high at 87. 86 on Mom's Day and partly sunny. Okay, thanks for being with us. Be back again at 6. Enjoy the weekend.
ABC. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. We're going to begin at the White House tonight, where two things have emerged with even greater clarity. That President Clinton is determined to use U.S. military force if necessary to stop the Bosnian Serbs from waging war on the Bosnian Muslims, and that he believes U.S. allies in Europe are closer to going along with them. A common approach, the President says, is emerging, and it will be evident sooner rather than later. At the White House for us, Britt Hume. The President, appearing after a meeting with the leaders of the European Commission, said that contrary to some news reports, his Secretary of State had made real headway in getting European support for U.S.-led military action in Bosnia. There, there's been a lot of agreement on what should be done. There is still some disagreement around the edges about what the overall specific tactical steps should be, but I think that there is a lot more agreement uh, than you think. The sticking point for the Europeans is not airstrikes, but lifting the arms embargo, which is now helping the well-armed Serbs. Some in Europe fear lifting the embargo would only endanger the troops they have already sent to Bosnia. But Mr. Clinton indicated he is still pushing to lift it. So I think that's one of the options, that's certainly one of the options that we have urged that uh, be considered, and, and uh, I think it's, it's, cer it's certainly one of the options that's still on the table. I think we've got to keep the heat on. Once the embargo is ended, the president is prepared to use U.S. air power to protect the Bosnian Muslims until they're better armed. He said he would ask Congress for approval for that and said it would not be an open-ended mission. I would have a very specific, clearly defined strategy to pursue and very clear tactical objectives for the use of that air power, which would have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and which not only I, but our military advisors had advised me could be achieved. Senior officials here recognize that Mr. Clinton's commitment to action in Bosnia does not help him to refocus his administration on its economic plan. But they believe the president had no choice. As one of them put it, the pictures from Bosnia were showing something horrible and real, and you had to do something. Rit Hume, ABC News, the White House. Some people at the Pentagon are apparently not convinced that airstrikes will work. Sources tell ABC's Bob Zelnick that at a meeting yesterday, Defense Secretary Les Aspen himself told the President that even if bombing forced the Bosnian Serbs to agree to the United Nations peace plan at first, they would eventually resume fighting. Secretary Aspen even suggested changing the plan to make it more acceptable to the Bosnian Serbs. In Bosnia itself, there's a great deal of uncertainty on whether the U.S. will actually intervene. At the moment, the only concrete action is the U.N. move to declare six cities in Bosnia as safe havens. At the moment, they're anything but safe. In Bosnia, ABC's Jim Lorry. Five-year-old Alan Shimic is one of those for whom the U.N. declaration will make no difference. Regaining consciousness in a Tuzla hospital, he asks for his mother. Doctors have not yet told him his parents were killed when their home was destroyed Wednesday in a Serbian artillery barrage. This ham radio operator here is receiving reports from other regions the UN has declared safe areas. He reports things are far from safe. From the town of Zepa, which is surrounded by Serbs, he hears they have set fire to parts of the town and its Muslim defenders are retreating. To the south, Serbian gunners shelled the town of Gorazda again. Recent video carried out of the region shows appalling casualties in a town which has been under siege for more than a year. Tuzla, swollen by more than 100,000 refugees, remains the safest of the places the UN seeks to protect. People here say the UN must do more than send in a few more observers. Announcing safe areas means nothing unless the UN is prepared to send in a large contingent of new troops. The only UN troops here now are about 150 British soldiers who have neither the UN mandate nor the firepower to protect anything. Without more decisive UN action soon, Bosnian Muslims fear there'll be no more so-called safe areas to protect. In the towns of Zepa and Grajda alone, more than 140,000 people may die or be forced to flee unless something is done. Jim Laurie, ABC News, Tuzla. Another point of pressure on the Bosnian Serbs may come, may come, from their allies and suppliers in Serbia itself, which is the core of the former Yugoslavia. Yesterday, their leader, Slobodan Milosevic, said Serbia would no longer supply the Bosnian Serbs with fuel or weapons. 
As ABC's Jerry King reports, there are some other signs as well of a changing attitude in the Serbian capital, Belgrade. Yugoslav TV is a barometer of what the Serbian leadership thinks. They use it to shape public opinion. These days, the TV carries news critical of the Bosnian Serbs. The state of Yugoslavia, he says, cannot be sacrificed for the sake of one nationalist group. The dynamiting of two mosques in Bosnia, presumably by Bosnian Serbs, would have gone unreported ten days ago. Many here believe President Slobodan Milosevic is sincere in trying to force acceptance of a peace plan. But elsewhere, others say he's doing it only out of necessity because the international sanctions have ruined Serbia's economy. Milosevic is responsible for a substantial part of what's happened over the last two years. Therefore, everybody's quite right to be skeptical about any conversion. I don't believe he's been converted under anything other than stark reality. If the peace plan does cut off everything to the Bosnian Serbs, that should hurt them because Serbia is their major supplier. But according to experts on the ground, the blockade is not going to have that immediate an effect. When the Yugoslav army pulled out of Bosnia last year, they left behind enough weapons, enough ammunition and enough fuel that I think the Bosnian Serbs could continue the war for six months. But the abrupt change in official thinking has caught people here by surprise. The view here tonight is that President Milosevic is in a precarious position now. If in order to please the rest of the world, he presses the Bosnian Serbs too hard and too fast, he risks losing support at home. And there are hardline nationalists more than ready to replace him should that happen. Jerry King, ABC News, Belgrade. In a moment, we'll go on to the other news. The economy, why the unemployment rate is not coming down. Our report tonight on medicine and money. How much of Hillary Clinton's health care reform plan will business leaders support? And this is Friday, so we'll have our person of the week, the Arkansas Traveler. Senior PGA Tour Player of the Year, Lee Trevino for Cadillac. Life at the top is easy. It's staying there that's hard. That's why no matter how good you are, you have to keep getting better if you want to stay a winner. Same with this Cadillac DeVille. When I started on tour, it was America's number one luxury car. And because it keeps getting better, it's still number one today. Believe me, there's one thing that never gets old, and that's winning. It's conquests our legend. Germ killer, Plax Slayer. Now Listerine faces its greatest challenge. The ever-present threat of the gun disease. today the first overall measure of the economy's performance in April. In a word, flat. For the third month in a row, the unemployment rate has remained stuck at 7%. And as ABC Stephen Ogg reports, the recession has taught most employers a very hard lesson. When it comes to the size of their workforce, smaller is safer. This is one reason many companies are not hiring. A few months ago, the Universal Dynamics Corporation installed this machine that uses a laser to cut metal. It replaced about 15 workers. What's more, it can work seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and does not require expensive medical care and pension benefits. Universal Dynamics, like many American manufacturers, has been using technology to produce more with fewer workers. Even companies that are doing more business and want to hire more workers find there's another reason holding them back. Uncertainty is the main issue. We don't know what our share of the cost for health care is going to be, and we don't know how it's going to affect the general economy. Across the country, many businesses which have cut their workforces to survive or just to increase their profits have found that fewer workers working harder can get the job done. Like the Greater Washington Board of Trade, where the workforce was slashed from 43 to just 29. Lobbyist Gary Curtis used to be chairman of one committee. Now he also supervises four others. His work week has gone from 50 hours to about 72. His wife almost needs an appointment to see him. We need to work hard to be certain we, we schedule a Saturday, Sunday that clearly is our time. Every third weekend is about the best we can do uh, without an event, and frequently that means we've got to go away. 
Curtis is not alone. Overtime nationwide is now at a record high. Economists say that means more workers will have to be hired eventually. The problem is they've been saying that for months. Stephen Ogg, ABC News, Washington. Stephen Ogg mentioned the uncertainty that employers have about health care costs, and that brings us to our question tonight about medicine and money. Will American companies sign on to a program of reforms that could be very expensive for them? In Williamsburg, Virginia today, Mrs. Clinton met with the Business Council, a national group of leaders to talk about just that. Here's ABC's George Strait. The First Lady had a difficult task in trying to win over a fairly hostile audience of businessmen. Many of these leaders of the nation's largest industries have become increasingly critical of the administration's health care reform proposals. I think that they're very concerned over how the system is going to be paid for. Stay away from price controls. Stay away from, uh, from uh, solutions that impose a lot of government direction on the system. And the executive said, stay away from new payroll taxes. The meeting was closed to the news media, but afterwards, Mrs. Clinton said she was satisfied. At least based on uh, their response and what many of them said to me afterwards, they were very encouraged. What do you say to the CEOs who worry that your health care proposal is out of balance, too heavy on taxes and too light on cost containment and those kinds of issues? Well, that's not true. We believe, based on everything we know, that for the vast majority of businesses, health care reform will be a net winner, their costs will stabilize and go down. When pressed for details, Mrs. Clinton said none has been finalized. Still, business leaders said she told them what they wanted to hear, that most of the health care reform package would be paid for by eliminating inefficiencies, not by raising taxes. I think, I think that most of the CEOs would come away at feeling much more encouraged by her focus, again, on eliminating waste that exists and spending those dollars more effectively. None of the CEOs seem willing to sign on to the First Lady's reform proposals, but they do seem willing to stop sniping at them until the final plan is released. George Strait, ABC News, Williamsburg, Virginia. On Wall Street today, the Dow Jones Industrials lost about four points to close at 34.37. The trading was moderate. For the week, stocks lost about nine points. President Clinton today revealed his proposals for campaign spending reform. They include limits on the amount that special interest groups may contribute to candidates and limits on some public funding for Senate and House campaigns. During the presidential campaign, Mr. Clinton called for sweeping reform, but he is finding many incumbent politicians reluctant to change the rules. In Montgomery, Alabama today, a judge has ordered the former governor, Guy Hunt, to pay a fine and perform a thousand hours of community service for looting his inaugural fund of $200,000. Mr. Hunt was convicted a month ago. He automatically lost his job as governor. He could have received 10 years in prison. We'll be back in just a moment. You know how later in the morning you can start to run out of steam? Well, I've actually found a breakfast that helps keep me going. Breakfast with grape nuts. I heard try it for a week, so I did. And I feel so good. Turns out grape nuts is a fat-free natural energy source. And it has a natural, crunchy taste. But really, you've got to try it for a week yourself. See how good you feel all morning. Breakfast with Post Grape Nut Cereal helps keep you going strong all morning long. If you are willing to give up AT&T quantity on a business called Seoul, another company's rate could save you 8-1. In your money, that's about one cent. Leaving AT&T doesn't make a lot of sense. With trusting eyes, the children show Minds open, hearts true Our spirits grow The touch, the feel The fabric of our lives The touch, the feel of cotton The fabric of our lives Hey, guess what makes Ace the place in Nashville, Tennessee? It's new ways to do things, John. Like Royal Oak Charcoal for only 99 cents after a $4 mail-in rebate, plus festival patio chairs are just $6.88 each. Hey, Ace is America's place for better ideas. Authorities in Boston have spent the day trying to make sure that an ugly part of the city's past doesn't repeat itself. Yesterday, black and white students got into a brawl outside South Boston High School. 
It reminded many people of the violence there during the days of court-ordered busing in the 1970s. Here's ABC's Jim Hickey. South Boston High School was closed to students today. Administrators and city officials met to work out ways to prevent a recurrence of yesterday's racial outburst. The fighting erupted shortly after Boston's mayor and other officials had met with students in an attempt to defuse growing racial tension. Several people were hurt, including the mayor and a policeman who was knocked unconscious. It is unclear what precisely sparked the riot, but in recent weeks, white students have complained about blacks carrying weapons to school. Blacks complain about racial threats. Today, the anger was still evident. Yesterday was just to show that we ain't taking no more stuff, and they keep on thinking that tough guys are going to get more of it. But I think they're getting mad because a lot of people saying that we are trying to take over Southie. And all we do is just go to school with you. Courts ordered the desegregation of South Boston High in 1974 creating in what is still a predominantly white neighborhood a high school with an enrollment that is only 30 percent white. The majority of students, black and Hispanic, are bussed in from other neighborhoods. While yesterday's fight involved mostly young people, many say adults are fanning the flames of racial hatred. Some of these adults who don't want to be constructive, let them get out of the way and let us work with the young people and let them provide the kind of leadership to bring the city together. Officials plan to meet with students again on Monday in an effort to overcome the racial bitterness. Jim Hickey, ABC News, Boston. The Pentagon has announced another round of cutbacks at U.S. military bases overseas. 46 more foreign bases, most of them in Europe, will be closed or reduced in size, which means another 6,100 U.S. troops will be brought home. When we come back, a Palestinian exile returns home. Allergy eyes. Red, sticky, itchy. Almost anything can cause them. Allergies can make your eyes look bad and feel worse. Allergy eyes are why there's Visine AC. Unlike ordinary eye drops, Visine AC is specially formulated for maximum allergy relief. It helps relieve itching, burning, stickiness, and gets the red out. So this allergy season, look and feel your best. Get Visine AC. This has been a month for reunions in the Israeli-occupied territories. Israel has permitted 30 Palestinian exiles to come home. They're the only Palestinians out of about 2,000 exiles since 1967 ever to be allowed back. They are taking stock of what has changed in the years they were gone and what has not. ABC's Dean Reynolds has been with one of them. As he resumes his work as president of Birzeit University after 19 years in exile, most of it in Jordan, Hannah Nasser can easily see what he's missed. It looks much, much more imposing than what I thought about it. Not one of these school buildings was standing when Nasser was expelled from the West Bank. If the Israelis thought that by deporting me, uh, the university would collapse, I think they got the wrong message because through my deportation it has 
increased and has doubled and doubled and doubled. So too has the resistance to the occupation, often led by students like these whose militancy he respects. They are very political. I mean, they are very political because they are in a situation which calls for political activity. The occupation, he says, is more demeaning than he remembers it. The Israeli army, tougher. I've never seen them act in such a humiliating manner. Today, Nasser is going to the Israeli military administration to pick up his new ID card, without which Palestinians here are non-persons. He sees evidence the Israelis have kept track of him all these years. His old ID card, the one seized when he was deported, still... Yeah, for you, the taster's choice. Is that all? Overseas, this has been a month for reunions in the Israeli-occupied territories. Israel has permitted 30 Palestinian exiles to come home. They're the only Palestinians out of about 2,000 exiles since 1967 ever to be allowed back. They are taking stock of what has changed in the years they were gone and what has not. ABC's Dean Reynolds has been with one of them. As he resumes his work as president of Birzeit University after 19 years in exile, most of it in Jordan, Hanna Nasser can easily see what he's missed. It looks much, much more imposing than what I thought about it. Not one of these school buildings was standing when Nasser was expelled from the West Bank. If the Israelis thought that by deporting me, uh, the university would collapse, I think they got the wrong message because through my deportation it has increased and it has doubled and doubled and doubled. So too has the resistance to the occupation, often led by students like these whose militancy he respects. They are very political. I mean, they are very political because they are in a situation which calls for political activity. The occupation, he says, is more demeaning than he remembers it. The Israeli army, tougher. I've never seen them act in such a humiliating manner. Today, Nasser is going to the Israeli military administration to pick up his new ID card, without which Palestinians here are non-persons. He sees evidence the Israelis have kept track of him all these years. His old ID card, the one seized when he was deported, stares back at him from a well-worn security folder. But it's what stares back at him from the West Bank hilltops that has most of his attention these days. New housing for Jewish settlers. Now, after 19 years, I see that uh, the land has been taken, they want that land, they take it, they confiscate it, and they just build a settlement on it. Still, he feels some change in the atmosphere here. Twenty years ago, he says, Palestinians were afraid to say the words Palestine Liberation Organization, even in private. But now... I'm told people call Tunis, and uh, some of them speak with uh, Mr. Arafat. And he's noticed one more important difference. I see now there's a lot of Israelis who realize uh, the importance of peace with the Palestinians. And that is something to build on for one Palestinian who's finally been allowed to come home. Dean Reynolds, ABC News, in the Israeli-occupied West Bank. Back in just a moment. World News Tonight with Peter Jennings and the Person of the Week are brought to you by Ortho. from trouble as varied as nature itself. So turn to the source of advice and good ideas. Ortho. It's our nature to help. If you are willing to give up AT&T quality for a business call to Milan, another company's rate would save you 16 lire. In your money, that's about... one cent? Leaving AT&T doesn't make a lot of sense. Headaches can affect you as differently as day and night. For daytime headaches, Anison contains aspirin and caffeine. Caffeine energizes the aspirin to work better on your headache, so you can work better. Anison, daytime headache relief. 
the inner plaque power toothbrush fight Mm -hmm. getting 